السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Math Grade 5 Today we want to view the simplest form How, how to solve the simplest form How to write the fraction in the simplest form So our lesson today, simplest form, simplest form. Watch with me this video. Simplest form. Write out all the factors of two and four. The greatest common factor is two, so divide them both by two. Two fourths equals one half, and here's what we do. To convert. Terms, but synonyms which you may have heard are two different phrases or words. These definitions are uniform. Using a geometric model can help us learn what's happening when converting the simplest form. A rectangle shows five fifteenths. The GCF is five, which means the greater number can divide both fifteen and five. So divide both by five, get one third. The slowest terms. It's so boss being a nerd. To convert. To the simplest form, we gotta find the greatest common factor. Then take the numerator and denominator and divide them by that common factor. That common factor. To convert two fourths to simplest form. Write out all the Okay, so our lesson today, simplest form. Today, when put your voice in mute, please put your voice in mute. Today, we want to write to, to learn how to write the fraction in simplest form. How to write the fraction in simplest form. Show with me this video. In a previous video, we learned all about factoring whole numbers, and now we're going to learn how factoring can help us when working with fractions. We're going to learn how to simplify fractions. Simplifying a fraction means rewriting the fraction using the smallest top and bottom numbers we can without changing the value of the fraction. 
To help us understand what simplifying a fraction really means, let's take a look at the simplest fraction I can think of, 1 over 2. Now, this is already as simple as it can possibly be, so let's go the other way and complicate it by dividing our rectangle here up into more parts. The amount of our rectangle that's shaded is still the same, but now the numbers for our fraction are 3 over 6. The numbers are bigger because our rectangle is now divided into more parts. The fraction we have now, 3 over 6, is equivalent to our original fraction, 1 over 2. That means they have the same value. They represent the same amount. So what if someone gives you the fraction 3 over 6, like 3 sixths of a candy bar? Well, we know from our picture that that means they're really giving you 1 half. But how can we show that using math and not pictures? Well, that's where factoring comes in. Let's take our complicated fraction, 3 over 6, and factor both the top and bottom numbers. Now, the bottom number, 6, can be factored into 2 times 3. The top number, 3, is a prime number. Its only factors are 1 and itself. So we can write that as 1 times 3. There, we've rewritten our fraction using factoring, and now it kind of looks like two fractions being multiplied together. 1 over 2 times 3 over 3. Of course, 3 over 3 is what I like to call a whole fraction, since its value is equal to 1. Now, here's the interesting part. Since 3 over 3 equals 1, and multiplying by 1 has no effect on a number, we can just get rid of that 3 over 3. Basically, the 3 on the top and the 3 on the bottom cancel each other out. And once they're gone, we're left with the fraction 1 over 2. So that means that the fraction 3 over 6 simplifies to 1 over 2. Another way of thinking about it is that we're trying to find any whole fractions that are hiding in the fraction we're trying to simplify. And if we find any, we can just get rid of them, and the fraction we're left with is simpler than the one we started with. Now that we know the basics, let's learn the procedure for simplifying fractions. First, replace the top and bottom numbers of the fraction with their prime factors. Next, look to see if any of the factors are the same on the top and bottom. If they are, then we call them common factors because they're something that both the top and bottom have in common. If you find a pair of common factors, you can cancel them out. Just draw a line through them, like this. And last, once all the common factors have been canceled, you need to re-multiply any factors that are left over on the top or bottom. This makes sure that you end up with only one number on the top and bottom of your simplified fraction. Oh, and there's one important thing to remember. If you're ever able to cancel out all of the factors on the top or bottom of a fraction, don't be tempted to write in a zero. Put a one in there instead. The reason you can write in a 1 is because 1 is always a factor of any number. It's just we usually don't write it in. For instance, if you're going to factor the number 15, you just say that it's 5 times 3. But you could also say that it's 5 times 3 times 1. In fact, you could even say it's 5 times 3 times 1. See why there's always a 1 left over when you're canceling common factors? All right. So that's the basic idea behind simplifying fractions. And once you know the procedure, it's really not that hard. But you might want to rewatch this video just to make sure you've got the idea. Now, there aren't any exercises for this video because it's really just an introduction. But in part two, we'll see a couple more examples of how you can use the procedure to simplify fractions, and then you'll get plenty of exercises to do as homework. Oh, yeah. Welcome to part two of simplifying fractions. In part one, we learned the procedure for simplifying fractions. Basically, you just take the top and bottom numbers and factor them down to their prime factors. And then you see if there's any factors that are the same on the top and bottom. We call those common factors. And if there are, you just cancel them out. And once you've canceled out all the common factors, you remultiply whatever's left over to get your final answer. In this video, we're going to see a couple examples of how we can use that procedure to simplify fractions. Let's start with an easy one. Let's simplify the fraction 5 over 15. Step 1 is to factor the top and bottom numbers. So, we know that 15 factors in to 5 times 3. And 5 is a prime number, that means its only factors are 1 and itself. But 1 is always a factor, so we don't need to write that down. Step 2 is to look for common factors and cancel them. And we can see that there's a 5 on the top and there's a 5 on the bottom. They're not directly over each other, but that doesn't matter. They still form a common factor pair, and so we can cancel them out like this. Step 3 is to reorganize our answer. Now, we don't have any factors that need to be recombined by multiplying. We just have a 3 on the bottom, and we don't have any factors left over on top. But you'll remember that there's always a factor of 1. 
So 5 over 15 simplifies to one-third. All right, I think we need to see another example, but a harder one this time. Let's simplify the fraction 30 over 36. The procedure is the same. Step one is we factor the top and bottom numbers all the way down to their prime factors. Let's do the top number first. 30 factors into 5 times 6. 5 is prime, but 6 can be factored into 2 times 3. So our 30 on top becomes 5 times 2 times 3. Now the bottom number. 36 can be factored into 6 times 6. And each of those 6's can be factored into 2 times 3. So our bottom number becomes 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. Well, it looks like we do have some common factors. There's a 2 on both the top and bottom that will cancel each other out. And even though there's more than one 2 on the bottom, we can only cancel one of them out because there's only one 2 on top. Remember, you always have to cancel common factors as pairs. Now we can see that there's another pair we can cancel. There's a 3 on both the top and bottom, so we can just cross those out. Okay, that's all the common factors we can cancel. So now all we have to do is see what's left over. We have a 5 on the top and a 2 times 3 on the bottom. We don't want to leave our problem looking like this, so we need to recombine any factors that didn't cancel. That means multiplying together our 2 and 3 on the bottom, which gives us 6. There, we're left with the fraction 5 over 6. That's the simplified form of the fraction 30 over 36. They both have the same value, but the simplified one is written using the smallest numbers possible. Now, some of you may have been taught that the way to simplify fractions is to find the greatest common factor of the top and bottom numbers and just cancel that. Basically, that's what we are doing when we cancel all of the common factors using our procedure. In fact, if you multiply all of the common factors together, you'll get the greatest common factor, or GCF as I like to call it, you know, to, to sound cool. All right, so that's how you simplify fractions. But I'll bet some of you are wondering, why would we even want to simplify fractions? That's a good question. Basically, it's to make life simpler. Well, at least for your teacher who has to grade all your homework. For you, it you know, just makes life more complicated. No, just kidding. <laughs> simplified fractions make your life easier, too. Because usually, simplified fractions are much easier to work with. For example, if your friend said to you, here, you can have 27 fourths of my sandwich. It would have been much easier if they had just said that you could have one half of their sandwich, since one half is the simplified form of 27 fourths. So now, whenever you see a fraction, you can ask yourself, hmm, could that be any simpler? And if so, you'll know just what to do. So get on out there, work on those exercises, start making the world a simpler place for us all. Okay. Today we have a new vocabulary. What's the meaning of simplest form of a fraction? What's the meaning of simplest form of a fraction? Is one of its many equivalent fractions. It's one of many equivalent fractions. The second word, what's the meaning of equivalent fraction? Are fractions that name the same number, like, suppose we have this fraction one over two, 1 over 2 equals 3 over 6. 3 is over 6 equal 4 over 8. 4 over 8 equal 5 over 10, etc. So all, all fractions here equivalent because they have the, the same value. They have the same value. Watch with me this video now. My name is Ray Cassandra Cole. I am 13 years old and I'm from the Philippines. I'm Look at the fraction 2 by 3. All fractions have a very special property. If we multiply the numerator and the denominator of a fraction by the same number, the value of the fraction remains unchanged. Let's say we multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6. So this will equal 4 by 6. These two fractions have the same value. Or we can also multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3, 
to get 6 by 9. All these three fractions will have the same value. If we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same value, the fraction's value remains unchanged. Now by intuition, we should also derive another special property of fractions. What do we get if we divide 6 and 9 by 3? Yes, 2 by 3. It tells us that even if we divide the numerator and the denominator by the same value, the fraction remains unchanged. Let's look at an example. Consider the fraction 12 by 18. We can divide the numerator as well as the denominator by 6. The numerator will be 12 by 6 and the denominator will be 18 by 6. 12 by 6 is 2 and 18 by 6 is 3. 12 by 18 and 2 by 3 are the same. And this 2 by 3 here is called the simplest form. It means that this fraction cannot be reduced further. That's cool, but how did we know what number we are supposed to divide them by? The number 6 is in fact the highest common factor of the numerator and the denominator. If we divide the numerator as well as the denominator by the HCF, we get the simplest form. Say we have a fraction 30 by 50. And let's assume that you do not know what their HCF is. If we do not know the HCF, all we need to do is look at the common factors of the numerator and the denominator. 30 as well as 50 are divisible by 2. So we divide the numerator as well as the denominator by 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15 and 50 divided by 2 is 25. If there are no common factors of the numerator and the denominator, it means that the answer is in the standard form. But 15 and 25 both have 5 as their common factor, which tells us that this is not the simplest form. We divide the numerator as well as the denominator by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3 and 25 divided by 5 is 5. The numbers 3 and 5 do not have any common factors apart from 1. So this is the simplest form or the standard form of the fraction 30 by 50. The product of the numbers we divided the numerators and denominators by will be the HCF. Here, 2 times 5, which equals 10, is the HCF of 30 and 50. It is always recommended that you first find the HCF and then divide the numerator and the denominator by it just once instead of performing division many times. This is also called the simplification of fractions as we are simplifying it to its simplest form. Okay, so what is the name of our lesson today? Simplest form, simplest form. This is the meaning of the simplest form. Focus with me now for this example, example one. Write the fraction in simplest form. Write the fraction in simplest form. We have this fraction 27 over 18, 27 over 18. Numerator here is 27, the denominator here is 18. The first step, take each number and write the prime factors for this number. So, find GCF of 27 and 18. 27, as you know, equal 3 times 3 times 3. So I can write it 3 exponent 3, 3 exponent 3. And 18 equal 2 times 3 exponent 2, or 2 times 9, 2 times 9. But 9 equal what? 3 exponent 2. So I can write 2 times 3 exponent 2. As you know, GCF, Take the common factor in the low exponent. So the common factor here will be 3. The common factor will be 3. Take it in the low exponent. So the low exponent here will be 3 exponent 2. 3 exponent 2. 
So 3x1 and 2 means equal 9. 3x1 and 2 means equal 9. Then divide the numerator and the denominator in the fraction by the GCF. Go, go back to the same fraction. 27 over 18, then divide the numerator now, 27 divided by 9, and the numerator, the numerator 18 divided by 9. 27 divided by 9 equal 3, and 18 divided by 9 equal 2. This is, this form is the simplest form. This form is the simplest form. Example 2. Find the fraction in, in the simplest form. We have this fraction 21 over 30, 21 over 30. So the first step, find the prime factors for each number, then find GCF, then divide the numerator and denominator by the GCF. So 21 equal 3 times 7. And 30 equal 2 times 3 times 5. So GCF, what is the common factor? 3. So GCF will be 3. Go back to the same fraction. Now you can write 21 divided by GCF by 3 and 30 divided by 3. 21 divided by 3 will be 7. And 30 divided by 3 will be 10. So now we have 7 over 10. This is the simplest form. This is the simplest form. Example 3. Write the fraction in simplest form. We have this fraction. 8 over 9, 8 over 9. Take 8, 8 equal 2 times 2 times 2. I can write it 2 exponent 3. And 9 equal 3 times 3. So I can write 3 exponent 2. So no common factor. Here we have 2, here we have a 3. So if you don't have common factor, the common factor will be what? Will be 1, will be 1. So I can write now GCF, GCF equal 1. Go back to the same same fraction. We have here 8 over 9. Try to divide it by 1. Each number divided by 1, the answer equals the same number. So 8 divided by 1 equals 8, and 9 divided by 1 equals 9. So as you see here, the same fraction, the same fraction. We named this operation simplified. Simplified means we have the same form. We have the same form. Here we have some videos. When you have a free time, you can solve it. Now, who has a question now? Mister. Yes. Uh, this? Raise your, raise your voice, please. No, no. After five minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, Mister, why we, why we take in GCF a low number? Repeat your question, please. Why we take we take? Uh, GCF alone. As you know, the greatest common factor from this name means at the last, at the last, I have, I have uh, the big divisible, the big divisible for the two numbers, for the three numbers, for the more numbers. But in rule, I have many method to solve GCF. The one of this this method use exponent. Use exponent to solve GCF. When you want to use exponent, the first step take the common factor, but in the low, but in the low exponent because we want to solve the divisible, not not the uh, uh, the factor, not the multiply. We want to to solve the divisible. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Stop. Yes. شو هو ال HCF؟ The highest common factor, the same greatest factor, the same meaning for greatest common factor, highest common factor. Okay? Great, okay. great question. Thank you.
Yes, who has a question now? Mister, what time does the period finish? Hello, Mister. I'm okay. How Yes, what you repeat, please? What time does the period finish? Nine and ten. Mister, I'm okay. How are you? Waalaikumsalam, rahmatullahi barakatuh. Hello, Salam. Do you have a question? No. Okay, fine. Show with me now these videos. Mister, we have a break. No, show with me now. Hi, I'm Mrs. Bertram, and we are going to write this fraction in its simplest form. We are going to write 24 over 30 in simplest form. So we're going to start out with the fraction 24 over 30, and we want to find a common factor that we can divide out of 24 and 30. That factor is 6. So we're going to take 24 divided by 6 and 30 divided by 6. 24 divided by 6 is 4, and 30 divided by 6 is 5. So our answer in simplest form is the fraction 4 fifths. This is Mr. Wilson. Mandy scored 18 points in a basketball game. Olivia scored 12 points. Olivia scored 12 thirtieths the points scored. Write 12 thirtieths in simplest form. First, we need to find the greatest common factor or the G C F for 12 and 30. The factors of 12 are 1, oops, let's make our dot here, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Those are our factors for the number 12. Our factors of 30 are 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, and 5 and 6. If you look at both of these numbers, their greatest common factor would be the greatest number that they both have in common. In this instance, they both share the number 6. So the GCF, or the greatest common factor for these two numbers, is 6. So now what we can do is take our fraction, which was 12 thirtieths, and we will divide by the number 6. 12 divided by 6, and we have to do the same thing on the top and the bottom. 12 divided by 6 on the top, 30 divided by 6 on the bottom. Twelve divided by six equals two. Thirty divided by six equals five. So Olivia
scored. Two fifths. The points. Okay, I want from all to prepare your notebook or any paper, please. Now we have this fraction. Try to write this fraction in simplest form. Try to write this fraction in simplest form. Yalla, you have two minutes. Three over seven. Three over seven. Great, great. What is the GCF here? Seven. Yes. Five. Three over seven. Okay. Three when, when you find the GCF here, will be five. That is three over, over seven. Great. So here, three over seven. The answer here, three over seven. Yeah, the GCF is five. Yes, but the GCF is five. Great. We have 45 over 55. Find the simplest form. Find the simplest form. Eleven of uh, eleven of uh, eleven and nine. Eleven and up or down. Mr. 9 over 11. Yes, 9 over 11. What is the GCF here? Five. The GCF 5. Great. The GCF will be 5. So 45 divided by 5 will be 9. And 55 divided by 5 will be 11. So the simplest form will be what? Will be 9 over 11. Will be 9 over 11. I write this fraction in simplest form now. Two. Three over two. Three over two. What is the GCF here? It's four. It's four. Excellent. The GCF equal eight. So twenty-four divided by eight will be three. Mister. Two divided by eight will be two. Yes. Four or six over four. Four is the one of of simplest form, but that uh, it, it's not the last form. We want to to solve the last form. Solve the last form to simplest form. 
to the last form, 3 over 2, because GCF here equal 8, 24 divided by 8 will be 3, and 16 divided by 8 will be 1. Will be when you want to solve sumless form means the last form in sumless form. So sumless form has many, many steps to, re to reach to the sumless form. Uh, if you want to solve the sumless form, always find GCF very well. Find GCF incorrect, then try to divide the numerator and denominator by the GC by the GCF. Then you can find the same list for. Okay. Right. And please put your voice in mute when you <coughs> when you hear oh, your name. Answer, answer me and you can leave. Okay. Mr. Do five D first. Yes. Yeah, five D first. So on the boy. Okay. Today, Wednesday, now we are in the first period. Uh, Asil. Asil. Where is Asil? Oh. Uh, present or, or not? Asil. Absent? Okay. So, uh, Eliazia. Yes, Mr. Yes. Uh, Jude. Here, Mr. Great. Mr. Uh, uh, I am here. I am here, Mr. Okay. Rauda. Rauda. I am here, Mr. Great. Uh, Shamsa Faisal. I'm here. How are you, Shamsa? Mr. I am here. Why you put me? Yes, Mr. I Mr. Shamsa. Okay, yeah. How are you? Fine. Okay, Lean. Where is Lean? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Maria. Maria. Mister, why you put me the uh, present? Lean is an option. Tamar. Okay. Okay. Maria. Marwa. Mister. Here. Me too. I got to be. No. Me no good. Maria. 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 Where is Maria? Here. Here. Maria. Maria. Okay. Here. Here? Yes, yes. Right. Mama. Yes. 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 Yes. Nora. Yes. Mahra. Mister, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Mister. 
Bookstar, can we go now? Can we go now? Okay, put your voice in mute, please. When you hear your name, answer me and leave, please. What you hear? Non-stop. Okay, can leave now. Harib. Where is Harib? Harib. Oh. Absent. Ahmad Ali. Naim Shot. Mansour Ali. Mansour Ali Jama. Mansour Ali. Hamdan. Hamdan Shot. Naam. Okay. Naam. Hamdan. Khalid. Naam. Okay. Daniel. Yes. Daniel. Zain. Yes, the man, the life. Yes. Yes, you can leave now, Zain. Saeed Muhammad. Saeed Muhammad. Absent. Okay. Sultan Ali. سلطان علي ايوه نلمي هم بيعملوا اتصال اوكي عبد الله عبد الله بوت يور فويس ان ميوت بليز سلطان غازي مستر اعطي نطلع ايه سلطان غازي طيب عامر نعم جريت يو كان ليف ناو عبد الله الحمادي نعم اوكي عبد الله يو كان ليف ناو عبد الله راشد نعم جريت يو كان ليف ناو باي مستر باي عبد الله محمد الجابري نعم جريت ثانك يو يو كان ليف ناو عبد الله مسعود عبد الله مسعود طيب عمر اشرف عمر اشرف ابسنت طيب عمر ش... عمر الشامسي عمر الشامسي ابسنت آه فلاح فلاح الشرياني نعم نعم جريت ثانك يو يو كان ليف ناو ناو مايد نعم جريت مايد يو كان ليف ناو محمد آه الحمادي محمد الحمادي محمد الحمادي ابسنت اوكي محمد سعيد سريحي نعم جريت محمد ثانك يو يو كان ليف ناو محمد سهيل نعم جريت محمد يو كان ليف ناو مطاوع اوكي معاذ يس ثانك يو معاذ يو كان ليف ناو اوكي ثانك يو فور يور ليسننج ذيس از اور ليسن توداي هاف ا نايس داي سي يو تومورو ان شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته